ever wondered what you could watch in one weekend that would get your energy up and going? Something action packed? Well, have no fear. Vinitube is here. For today's list, we're going to be going over 10 of my recommendations for this sort of anime. Short, one core gems that you may have overlooked somewhere along the way. You ready for some action? But hey, before we begin, let me ask you this question. Ever felt like craving some of those awesome Japanese treats you see on the internet? I'm sure you do. And it's an understatement to say that the Japanese are some of the best in being creative with their selection of treats. This is where our sponsors of this video, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes come in. Tokyo Treat and Sakurako will help you experience that really special side of Japanese culture all in the comfort of your own home. By only paying a subscription fee to either of the boxes, you'll be getting a monthly assortment of cakes, mochi, tea and more delivered right to your doorstep. By the way, Sakurako contains more traditional snacks, while Tokyo Treat caters more on popular snacks that epitomize the concept of cool Japan. With Valentine's Day approaching fast, it would be a shame if you didn't have your sweets to give to your special loved one now, wouldn't it? This February, they're presenting special Valentine's Day boxes. A lot of the snacks in the box are Valentine themed, so they're just perfect for the occasion. If you're interested in trying all of these out, don't forget to check the link in coupon code in the description box. The prices are quite affordable and you'll get so much of it that it's definitely worth the shop. I hope you'll consider trying these sweets out. Now that you've had your share of sweetness and fluff, it's time to get the ball rolling on some of the most hot-blooded and exciting action anime for you to binge. Right off the bat, something sticks out for Katana Gatari. It's the art style that carries with itself a design choice that you don't see in anime every day. Set in Edo era Japan, this show can be summed up as one of the possible precursors to the modern wuxia tales that you often see these days. It's an adventure show that's quite wordy and features some characters who excel in playing their roles. The episodic and very dialogue focused nature of the show may not exactly be for everyone, but it certainly gives us something that was very different in its era, and I dare say still holds up to the modern day. But don't be fooled however, when it comes to the action sequences, Katana Gatari manages to excel thanks to its stylish flair and the interesting story and world that it builds through said episodes. It's not flawless, but Katana Gatari is just that uniquely quirky show that takes you on an adventure that you won't forget. Let me pull up the credits for Sirius the Jaeger. PA works? Something like this is definitely not the first thing that comes in my mind whenever I heard PA works, but after watching it, I did enjoy it. As I mentioned earlier, vampire anime tend not to always be a killed vampire's fare like Seraph of the End. Karin and the recently aired Vampire Dies in No Time are comedies. Vampire Night definitely isn't mainly about killing the vampires. Sirius the Jaeger falling into the category would set the viewer up for some expectations right off the bat. Overall, I think that it generally sticks to the tropes and story beats of such a title. You have the expected twists and all, but it just works. I find it plain but enjoyable and passable entertainment. It's probably boosted by the spectacular art quality actually. PA Works does it again with its pedigree for visual production, beautifully packaging everything in a setting and ambiance that feels quite unique for these let's kill vampires ensemble shows. Sirius the Jaegers, a pretty cool attempt by PA to branch out into the genre. Is it the best in their catalogue of memorable shows though? I don't think so, but it's still a pretty good popcorn show to binge over a weekend. Next, we have another vampire anime, Helsing Ultimate. Okay, forget what I said about Overlooked, as Helsing Ultimate back in the days was one of the most popular action anime of them all. You got the violence, the brooding stylish energy, and you got a rather complete and satisfying story that clocks in at 10 episodes of OVA goodness. Vampire animes are a dime a dozen, and they come in all sorts of genres. You have the more comedic ones, you have the dramatic romances, and you have the ones with a modern feel, but in terms of intensity and sheer edgy violence, few can come anywhere close to Helsing. Ultimate. It's a show that's aged rather well over a decade into its conclusion, and if you need something so stylishly hot-blooded, Helsing Ultimate could be your pick this weekend. So how's this for a recent anime? Super Crooks is a show that relishes in its western energy which translates pretty well in anime format. It's got the whole heroes and villains set up down pat and it's full of characters who are both lovable and a joy to follow. The enjoyment gets ramped up with how great the presentation was compared to my expectations. The voice acting is great, the art's perfect for the mood of the story and the plot generally flows well and is easy to consume. It feels like watching one of those Hollywood blockbusters in the realm of say uh, kick-ass but in anime form. Some quick wild fun to pass time over a weekend. If those things are to your liking, Super Crooks might be the show to satisfy your cravings. <laughs> 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 
Honestly speaking, it was a bit hard to sell Decadence at first, I think mainly due to its premise. Monsters forcing people to bunker up in a dystopian setting? How many of those Attack on Titan-like shows have we had already? Luckily though, Decadence has a lot of good things going for it that sets itself apart from those shows with similar premises. First off, it's an original anime, so when watching, I had almost no expectations. The eventual plot twist did catch me off guard, and it was after then I realised how brilliant some of them were. It started off as a dystopian fight for a survival thing, but it made good use of its short 12 episode airtime to evolve the show into something way beyond that by the time everything's said and done. And at the end of it all, it's a sci-fi show that transcends the initial action genre and offers some cool philosophical insights. Decadence got overshadowed by the blockbusters and sequels it aired beside, but this is a true underrated gem that you just have to watch. So at first glance, BNA looks like a superhero show with furries in an urban fantasy setting. After watching it, I'd say that it's got a lot underneath the surface and it explores a lot of themes that I didn't expect to get tackled. Political themes, sociological ones, conspiracies. It's got a lot more than it initially suggests, but we're not here primarily for those now, are we? We're here to have some action and some fights to get the energy going, and I'm pleased to say that BNA still has those elements in droves. It's rightfully fast-paced for a super-powered mystery action, and it's exciting in the sheer potential of where the adventure can take you. It's also got that trigger thing with revolting against the system as seen as Kill La Kill and Gurren Lagan. And while I'd say that those two did that aspect of the story better, BNA is no slouch either. Trigger rarely disappoints, and while BNA probably won't end up at the top of their greatest hits, it is a nice short show that's well worth your time. Okay. <laughs> Now, I've often talked about Vivi, and I still do. That's because in the realm of sci-fi, with a bit of those musical element backdrops, I widely consider it one of the best the anime industry has to offer, especially in the modern era. There's a lot to like about Vivi. The character development, the fluidity of the art and animation, the progression of the story, and of course, the fights. I often find it being compared to Tacdopt, but let's face it, if you have time to go for either of the two, Vivi's probably the more complete show for most people. Vivi has some themes that strike hard with how the world is going now, and it's one of the very few successful titles to drive home the themes regarding the dangers of technology. With a strong backdrop of real world relevant theme, amazing sound direction, and fights that are nothing short of wild and awesome that you just automatically ignore some of the sequences that don't make sense, Vivi is a surefire hit that's perfect for you to binge. Oh, and before we continue, subscribe, like the video, and share the video with your friends. Your help would be really appreciated. And let's have a huge party when we hit that one million milestone. Ah, let's go back to old school stuff with probably my era's poster chart for edgy psychological titles. Made infamous for its gore and stuff that makes your heart pound for the wrong reasons, I'd say the Elfin Lead has managed to carve out quite the legacy for itself. It's quite the polarizing title by combining those off-putting aspects with an arguably strong story that couldn't have worked without them. It's got stuff in it like discrimination and humanity as themes while putting everything against the hauntingly memorable soundtrack and atmosphere. Does the show have to go through the lengths of showcasing gore and nudity to achieve the effect? Probably not, but with the route it decided to go, I'd say that the anime team did a pretty damn good job at using those elements to prop up the feel of the show. An oldie, yet a goodie. Elf and Lead could be your show to watch. I hope you haven't had enough of Heroes yet because this right here is an awesome show. The premise starts out pretty simple once you've got the meat of it. Grandpa has been going through tough days and as fate would have it, he gets turned into a half machine, half human hero. Getting granted powers renews his purpose in life. However, how does it all come together when he's set on a collision course with a similarly empowered sociopath? So the first thing that will likely stick out to you is the uncommon protagonist. It's not too often we see an old man protagonist in anime and overall, I really applaud Inuyashiki for its efforts to stick out. Despite the premise that I call simple and common, the show itself has some hidden depth for its viewers to uncover when it comes to themes regarding humanity and morality. Is it super unique? Well, not really, but you see the earnest effort there to connect with the viewers, especially with how the flow of the story goes. Don't let the plain premise dissuade you from watching this amazing title. Now we've reached the 10th entry, I'd like to recommend 91 Days. 
Several times I've talked about this title on those underappreciate or underrated show lists. How can I not when I see such an excellently crafted show lacking in the popularity department? The sentiments do still hold true, honestly speaking, and while revenge stories are dime a dozen in anime, it's rare to find anything with an ambiance quite like 91 Days. It probably is largely the Western classic literature style approach, but you really feel that this show is something special in the sea of revenge stories in anime. 91 Days is for me one of the best in pushing forth the narrative in a focused and consistent manner. It's quite easy for revenge stories to forget the revenge part after quite a while, but not for 91 Days. It's a crime thriller that manages to successfully hold the suspense and theme all the way through its run. It sets itself apart from the pack with how it shows off the unglamorous side of humanity and the dark recesses of the human heart. 91 Days is part of a niche genre, but this title is a gem that anyone with an appetite for historical suspense with a healthy healthy dose of violence should watch. How's that for a list? If you've got any other action show recommendations that you'd like to make, provided that they fall in 12 episodes or less, I'd love to hear about those in the comments section. Don't forget to check out our sponsors of this video, monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Links are in the description. If the video gave you a good time, don't hesitate to check out the rest of the channel for other videos and countdown lists that you might just enjoy. You can also connect with me through Instagram or support the channel through Patreon, both which will be linked in the description box. Now, I had a really good time making this list and I'm excited to see what other suggestions that you've got, both for short anime and for future content you'd like to see. I hope you have a great day. See ya.